It's been going on for decades. Uh, I remember when I was working closely with uh, James Callahan when he was prime minister, and we were looking at uh, the movement, the separatist movement in Scotland, the Scottish National Party, and all of that. But in those days, only about 20% of Scots were in favor of separatism. And as this movement developed, as the Conservative Party almost died in Scotland, uh, leaving the Labor Party, the Labor Party was not responsive, as responsive as, as it might have been, and both Harold Wilson in those days and James Callahan did their best to encourage uh, a, a broader representation uh, than the working, just working class labor, even in Scotland, which was disproportionately working class, and class is an important determinant of voting behavior in Great Britain. Uh, so it grew, but this chap, Alex Salmon, has it all going for him because he's a, a, a very dynamic politician. The SNP broke through a rather unpopular labor government so that there were labor voters who went over a few years ago when Gordon Brown was prime minister and Alistair Darling was his, cha his uh, chancellor, finance minister. And uh, this gave Alex Salmon the opportunity to, to actually be in government and he did a pretty good job. But then he started very hard pushing the idea of the heart of Scotland rather than the, the head uh, without, almost without regard to the economic issues, the threats that uh, uh, economists, uh, I did some work in, 2000, in uh, 1975 on the EEC referendum, the European Economic Community referendum with Harold Wilson and with Jim, Ca Jim Callahan, and that showed that uh, there was a real cut between young people and the reasons that they were in favor of Europe and the older people, and they were in favor of Europe, and the, we see the same thing in Scotland. And the big swing has been with the clever things that, uh, that Alex Salmon has done, the first minister of Scotland. He lowered the voting age to 16. So 16, 17-year-olds can vote. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, he was allowed by David Cameron to set the date. Number three, the wording of the referendum question is a biased question. Any pollster would know that you don't say, should Scotland become an independent country, which is the wording of the questions, it should or should not is the way to have an unbalanced question. It's as easy as that. But you might get just an edge and you, you take a, the tiny little edge that the 16, 17 year old gets because they're only 2%, two in 100, uh, and you get another edge on that. and You get another edge on setting a date two years away so that he's got time to build the momentum. And then you had a disastrous uh, speech by the chancellor who seemed to be talking down to the Scots and that I think caught the mood of the nation. And all of a sudden from being an easy win, it was a close race. And that close race extended right up to the day.